Hello, my name is Wendy Myers. Welcome to the Myers Detox Podcast. You can learn everything about detoxification of heavy metals and chemicals on this podcast and on my site, MyersDetox.com. Today we have my friend Josh Mason on the show of the TheDetoxDudes.com, and we're going to be talking about everything related to the emotional and spiritual journey that happens when you do a detox. Factors to consider like stress, how stress impacts detox, how a family can impact detox. Uh, we also talk about um, jaw alignment and how stress can really impact your jaw, which prevents brain lymph drainage and a lot of other really interesting things that Josh is doing to uh, to facilitate detox and his healing journey. And we also talk about mucoid plaque, which is kind of like a, a buildup of a lining of the intestines that's uh, toxic that can have biofilms and infections and other other stuff in the intestines that need to be cleared out and his thoughts and techniques on how to do that. We also talk about parasites and how he does parasite cleansing and how that's really important to think about in terms of detoxing and do that before you enter into a detox. So lots and lots of really interesting topics we haven't really covered so much on the show. I know you guys listening to this podcast are concerned about the levels of toxins that you have in your body. That's why I created the, my quiz, it's the heavy metals quiz to determine the relative levels of toxins you have on your body or in your body based on some lifestyle questions that you answer. So go check it out at heavymetalsquiz.com. Takes two seconds to take it. And then following that, you get a free video series that tells you what's the next steps. What do you need to do to start on the detox? What about testing? What about supplements? Like, where do you start? And so you get this totally free video series following that. Go take it at heavymetalsquiz.com. Josh Mason is the 2010 Brazilian Jiu Jitsu world champion and the 2012 Pan American champion. Suddenly in October of 2013, he began to experience debilitating panic attacks, suicidal despair, and gut-wrenching anxiety. After pharmaceutical drugs provided no relief, he found himself on a hero's journey, traveling to the corners of the earth, experimenting with some of the world's most powerful hallucinogens. And when neither ayahuasca, float tanks, fasting, meditation, colon cleansing, nor yoga could provide him with relief, he began to lose faith. In a surreal sequence of events that transpired three years after beginning his healing journey, he found out about heavy metal poisoning and started a comprehensive detoxification protocol. Now, alive and well to tell the tale, Josh has uh, created his site, thedetoxdudes.com, which is a company devoted to helping people overcome toxicity. So you can go check him out there. Josh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yes, thank you for having me back on. Yeah, so you're part of the detoxdudes.com. I just love that name. And we got to get more guys into detox. So I love that you're going to leading the charge on that. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your story and why you're focusing on detoxification? Sure, yeah. Um, basically, I was like a normal dude for my whole life. Never would th think about detox or health or anything other than like eating a lot of pasta before a fight because carbohydrates were supposed <laughs> to be good. Like that, that was the extent of my knowledge, right? So I, I, I was a jujitsu athlete. I was working in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I was doing all of these things in the external world that uh, one would label me as successful. And then in October of 2013, I fell suddenly and dramatically ill. And I spent three and a half years trying to figure out what was going on with me. And I was experiencing severe panic attacks, severe depression. My digestive system shut down on me. I was, I was suicidal. I was literally like a walking dead person. And I was living in a state of chronic fear 24 seven, hardly slept. I mean, my, the description is if I really went into all the details, it's like unbearable to listen to. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. 
And then uh, about three and a half, almost four years into my journey, I finally learned about mercury and the effects that mercury has on a brain. And I began a serious mercury detox protocol pretty much days after what I thought was going to be the end of my life. I, I was either going to take my own life or I was going to, I mean, I had a trip planned to go to Africa to take Iboga. Um, and if Iboga didn't work, I was going to take my own life. Like I was really down to the wire mm. and um, learned about mercury, learned about detox, learned about parasites and transformed my life in the past three and a half years since then. I mean, I have a YouTube channel. I coach people all around the world. I lead retreats. Um, I feel like I'm on top of my game and I literally was almost dead three and a half years ago. So detox resurrected me from the dead and of course, emotional and spiritual work because there, there's never, n nothing is ever isolated. These things are all connected as I'm sure we'll get to in this, in this talk, but detox was my core ally and my core, like, like foundation for my spiritual and emotional work continuously for all for these past three and a half years since I've recovered. Yeah. And I identify with that also that when I discovered mm -hmm. detox, it's just like, aha, this light bulb went on. And then as you continue on your journey, you're not only detoxing metals and chemicals, but negative emotions that are tied to those metals. And because your brain starts working, you can really step into your life purpose and you can actually remember stuff that you're reading. And, um, you know, you're just, your whole life can change because you get your life back essentially. hundred mm, percent. And so let's talk about that. Let's talk about the emotional and spiritual aspects of detoxification. So you know, the liver is known in traditional Chinese medicine as the seat of anger. And when we have this congested, toxic liver, that's our major detox organ, um, what's going on there? Talk about the emotional aspects of that. Yeah, you know, I think the liver is super, super tied to, to all of these dark, dark and negative emotions. Every time I do a liver cleanse, all of that stuff is coming to the surface. I always tell all of my clients, like in in liver cleanses, you can't just be showing up to work every day and like expect life to be as, no, as normal. You know, if you're holding stuff for many, many years, you're going to need space. You're going to need a safe space. You're going to need to create some, some boundaries between you and the outside world so that you're not ruining relationships. Right. So I, I'm definitely not an expert in like the, in Chinese medicine or exactly how the liver correlates to the emotional body. But I just know that for me, whenever I'm cleaning my liver, it, unless I'm doing it in like a slow, steady way with like milk thistle and some herbs, whenever I do a purge or a cleanse, um, anger is always coming to the surface. And it's always like old, old anger, like anger at my parents, anger at like a childhood bully. You'll be in the middle of a detox process and you'll just be thinking about the wackiest things, you know, like childhood memories and the guy who kicked you in the balls when you were five years old, you know, and it's just like <laughs> the strangest thing to be thinking about these things that never come into our field otherwise. So uh, I know for sure that they definitely, they definitely have a, an interplay together. Yeah. And you can yeah. bet that if you are in, the, in your day-to-day -day life experiencing a lot of anger, irritability, frustration, losing control on your spouse or your children, or just generally cranky, grumpy cat, um, you probably have some liver stuff going on. I mean, we all do. Can you talk about that load that's placed on the liver on just you know, building up these toxins year mm. after year and that the liver has to deal with all this stuff and it's, it's problematic. The liver is like, it's like a HEPA filter, right? Whenever you see one of those air purifiers and you see that filter that comes out of it, that's essentially what our liver does. It's obviously more complicated than that. So everything that's coming into our body, even supplements, even herbs that we are taking, the liver is taking a bit of a burden. Right. So after years, imagine being unconscious for 20 years, like like 23 years, like I was. I was taking pharmaceutical drugs. I was drinking tap water on a regular basis. If I was lucky enough, it was filtered with a Brita filter. Right. Smoked weed all the time. It had edible marijuana that was riddled with pesticides and insecticides and all kinds of stuff. I ate 
McDonald's, Wendy's, antibiotic loaded meats, um, everything that I ate, every single item that I put in my body, which is the opposite of what of today, which is every item I put in my body is conscious and I'm mindful about every single item I put my body back in the day was putting a stress on my liver to clear the toxicity, to clear the stuff that my body didn't want. Right. So over time we develop all of these liver issues. The, the extreme would be this, right? With someone who's drinking alcohol all the time, right? You know, a few things that I've learned about for the liver have, have changed my life and changed a lot of my clients' lives as well. Basic things like having milk thistle on a regular basis. I like activation products, milk thistle oil. I have a teaspoon of that virtually every single day. And it's, it's protector, right? Its main job is to protect the liver. I really like Livatrex. I don't know if you've ever done a Moritz cleanse with Global Healing Center's Livatrex. You kind of combine the two. You do five days of the, the Global Healing Center in water and then the Moritz cleanse after that, which is olive oil and, and uh, lemon. And then, you know, our mutual friend Rob had taught me about Tudka. Have you ever heard of Tudka? Yes, yes. We had Michael McAvoy talk about Tudka in my liver rehab uh, cleanse, and it's just amazing. Does he use it on a regular basis? He does, yes. Interesting. I'll have to dive into it. I, I took like a half of a bottle, and it, it definitely caused intense detox reactions. Yeah. Um, but I know it's supposed to be like a miracle for for the liver. It's like an oil change, you know, for the for the the acids. And also I learned recently that it's effective for eye, like eye problems, like mm. when someone's losing their eyesight. So the yeah, liver and eyesight is very connected. Yeah. I mean, I know it's amazing that Tudka is amazing for uh, improving bile production and bile flow, uh, but it has lots and lots of benefits. It helps with blood sugar regulation and just lots of different things. Yeah. Yeah. And then one of my favorite things to do is uh, liver acupressure. Mm. that I learned from Dr. Eric Berg and also a Beamer. Have you ever used a Beamer? Uh, I have. I use a different one uh, called the Pure Wave, Matt. Okay. Have you ever put it on your liver? You know, I, I haven't specifically. I know when you kind of lay on it, it's, it's like, you know, uh, you know, buzzing your whole body. Uh -huh. It's a pulse electromagnetic field, Matt. So it's doing your whole body, but I have not put like the small device specifically on my liver. Mm. If you could send me a link to that machine, I'd like to check it out. Yeah, I've been yeah, using yeah. the Beamer for a while. I'm really, I'm really impressed with it. Um, and sometimes I sleep with the Beamer as well. Mm. But putting that, that Beamer device, there's a, the B, forget what it's called. It's like a little circle thing and you put it right on your liver. And it's, it causes detox reactions fairly mm. quickly. Hmm. This is how we detox the body, right? One of the main ways we detox the body. If the liver is clogged or the colon is clogged, we're completely screwed. It's like a waste of, in my opinion, it's a waste to do anything else, to spend money on, on all these other things unless our liver and our colon are flowing, right? And even the lymphatic system as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, so many people listen to this podcast. They want to detox. They know they, they need to detox. They maybe have metals tests uh, proving that they have metals. They need to get it out of their body. But you've got to clear the detox pathways. You've got to get your colon clean. You've got to get your diet clean. You've got to get the lymph flowing. You've got to purge your liver, just liver flushes, coffee enemas, what have you, or all this stuff can be in vain or make you sick and give you detox reactions. So yeah. we don't want that. We want you to purge your liver. So how do you balance detox with spirituality? Mm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because it's something I don't touch on a lot when I'm working with clients. Uh, I mean, I go into bioenergetics and things like that, which helps people to detox uh, emotional traumas and things like that. So there's a spiritual component to it. But what, what is your take on balancing yeah. detox and spirituality? That's literally my favorite thing to talk about. I get bored when we talk about supplements, <laughs> but, but I, I love talking about how these worlds merge because I've never found, I've never found them to be independent of each other. Like every single time I'm doing deep detox work, I have to up my game in the spiritual and the emotional worlds. And what I would say the most important piece of the puzzle is boundaries. This is for my life and what I've learned for me and most of my clients, boundaries are the most important 
subject when it comes to health and detox. And, you know, people couldn't fathom how boundaries is like a spiritual or an emotional subject, but because everyone wants to think that like just sitting and meditating in a cave is what spirituality is. But I believe spirituality to be um, how do we find our peace and how do we protect it? Right. And, you know, for me, I grew up in a world where everyone around me was trying to take pieces of my peace. They were trying to like, my family was just like, it's really difficult, you know? And so the way we grow up when we're children is kind of the way that we interact with the world now. And if some of us didn't have any boundaries with our family, then we're just going to have no boundaries with our coworkers, with our partners, with our employees or employers. And we lose ourselves when we don't have boundaries because, you know, it's like we're, we create no container for our peace when we're just boundaryless. Or if we're really just trying to be liked or trying to please people or trying to be right, for me, spirituality is like dropping all of these conditions, which is needing to please others, needing to put everyone else's needs before my own, needing to be right. You know, just the, just the thing about needing to be right, you know, what, what a, the being committed to being right versus being committed to like transformation and growth, even if you come across as wrong, or even if you make a mistake, it's like a leader is here for someone's transformation, right? And I believe everyone has the potential to be a leader, right? In that regard. So, so emotional and spiritual, number one piece of the puzzle and the number one foundation is is boundaries like declare your sovereignty you don't need to allow someone else to talk to you in a, in a negative way to put you down we don't have to tolerate crappy relationships that make us feel awful about ourselves there's no need to just like detox the, them out you know detox the <laughs> energy <laughs> vampires yeah you know people <laughs> who are just trying to manipulate you and and you know for me, after all these years of doing my, my deep work, I can really feel people's intentions. So I'm able to, to kind of drop people off before I, you know, get close with them. Um, but if you're in, if you're in deep with someone who doesn't have good intentions, you got to go through the heartbreak and the difficulty of, of releasing them. And it doesn't have to be a big dramatic thing, but just simply, you know, you're not in my life for my peace and my best good. And I we can't be friends right now. Right. Yeah. So so, you know, just really letting, letting all things go that don't serve us. To me, that's spirituality. That's the emotional detox uh, part of it. And even if that means family, you know, for me personally, I had to get away from my family to do deep, deep detox work because they didn't understand me. They were judging it. Um, they thought I was crazy. They didn't, they didn't understand the difficulty that I was going through. And so I really needed to be by myself for a phase and in order to, to really go through this process because it's such deep work to find myself, right? Another thing that I would say spirituality is, is, is finding our voice inside of our head because we've grown up with this pulling from other people's calculators. You know, like I remember at one point in time, I was reading a book a week and my life became, what would Tim Ferriss do? What would, you know, what would Wendy Myers do? <laughs> what would, whoever would, the book I was reading was, you know, uh, who would, what would this person do? What would mystery do from the mystery method, right? And, and, and in my own head, I just had other people's opinions. And I didn't actually quite have my own opinion on life, on my health, on, on, on my decisions. And that's what society does to us. It kind of conditions us to, to listen, to be obedient, and to not think for ourselves. So, so for me, spirituality and, and the emotional parts of this are about really finding that internal voice, which allows us to be so much stronger and, and authenticity, right? Your authentic internal voice. Yeah. And I That's think rant, but, yeah. that resonates with me so much because I'm doing a lot of that work right now. I'm doing a lot of like consulting with energy workers and just trying to clear stuff that maybe I feel like I don't have the, that I'm trying to un understand better I mean, how energy works and working all these different people to have a greater understanding 
of my world around me and, and, mm. and step into alignment with my true purpose and live a fun, happy, a joyful life, peaceful life. That's what we all want, right? Mm -hmm. And I think when people are have a lot of metal toxicities and have a lot of chemicals, they're just so brain fogged and so like anxiety and depression and and just other stuff going on because these metals are affecting their neurotransmitter production and affecting their blood sugar and affecting their energy levels. And they just can't, they don't have room for that stuff. It's almost like that stuff's a luxury or they're they're misguided in their attempts to kind of feel better emotionally or spiritually because all this garbage is just weighing mm -hmm. them down, you know? Yeah. That brings me into something that I forgot to mention, which is I always viewed detox as the anchor that prevents the ship or the boat from really going in a direction or in, a, in, in, in an area that that is healthy. But even when we detox, we still have to choose the right place to navigate to, yes. right? Like you can't just clear mercury and aluminum and expect to be enlightened, expect yeah. to be rich, <laughs> expect to be like, you know, every, everything works. It helps massively. It's like, in my opinion, the most important factor to have in place. But, but then we still have to navigate the boat and we still have to make the right decisions and and, you know, and be kind and have integrity and all of those things. Right. Yeah. So to me, that's where they also merge one, one kind of allows the other to thrive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very, very good point. Yeah. Because you still have to get in touch with your intuition and make the right choices for you. And because you can still do all this work and pick a narcissist to be with or a horrible yeah. business partner or do things that wreck your life. So let's talk about stress. Yeah. And how stress impacts detoxification and maybe your stress reduction techniques to, that will facilitate the body's ability to detox. Yeah. Well, you mentioned stress and I know you weren't going in this direction, but I just will say it because I'm of, of learning about it now with jaw alignment and how much stress that puts on the cranial nerves and on the vagus nerve. We can, we can go deeper into jaw alignment at some point later, but you know, I, I've seen firsthand how stress on the jaw, which is correlated to stress in my life, um, is directly affecting my body's ability to detox and to, to function properly, right? These cranial nerves are all connected to the upper cervical. The upper cervical is where our brainstem is housed. So when we're stressed, it's like, if you're, if you're stressed and you're grinding your teeth, Get your jaw checked. <laughs> but we can. I know that wasn't where you were going, yeah. but I just wanted to mention it. The place that I think you were going to, uh, that you were that you were going towards, is how stress in everyday life affects the body's ability to detox. I've begun to do in my own life is if I'm going through a spiritual clothes dryer, which happens like every month, and it just I just finished one recently. There was a crazy <laughs> eclipse. Everyone I talked to was like freaking out and like, what's going on? My relationship's ending. This is ending. And it's like everyone felt like they were going through something intense. Did, yeah, did you experience I, that? I absolutely. <laughs> I had a huge fight with my fiance and it, it was just, it was crazy. Yeah. Wow, not sleeping. I, 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 the full moon affects me. I just don't sleep well. And yeah. It just, everything's just kind of amplified. Totally. I think a lot of people have been going through deep relationship stuff. So there must be something going on astrologically. So what my cardinal rule is whenever I'm in one of those phases, every single supplement goes in the drawer. I don't even bother detoxing <laughs> because, you know, during those phases, when, when we cope with them and when we stay as best in our center as we can, I believe that that is a detox process in and of itself. I believe that's the universe ringing us out of all of our old junk and karma. And it's like, you know, it's like ringing a shirt out. It's not just done with the physical detox that we put into our mouth or, you know, that we create on, on our own bodies. It's also that the universe is, you know, guiding this process as well. The universe, for all those who are listening, wants us to get clear and clean and wants us to ascend to a new level of consciousness, right? So, so, you know, for me, that's like, whenever that comes in, and I'm just like, getting really buggy, 
without taking a lot of supplements, I'm like, okay, this is the universal detox process. Time to put all the other stuff away because I know I can't handle both. And, and I just moved to, you know, to just letting that process happen naturally because it's like impossible to detox effectively when you're going through extreme stress. Everything shuts down. Your, you can't, your bowels slow down. Your digestion slows down. Every single process in your body is just told, stop. You know, like we're in a fight right now. You cannot do anything that's not essential to survival, right? And detox in those moments is not going to be essential to survival, right? It's going to be like, how do I, how do I fight my way out of this seemingly life or death situation? Yeah. I mean, everything goes in cycles and I think it's very, it's very wise to be aware of that and honor that and honor your body and not feel like you're having to every single day I have to detox. That has to go in cycles as well. So yes, a great point. And, and you talk a lot about parasites Mm -hmm. and gut healing and everything related to that and how that plays into one's ability to detox. Could you talk about parasites for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Parasites are a huge, huge uh, problem in the, in the world. And, and people think that it's just like a third world country type thing. But as you know, and I know, we're all dealing with parasites, some microscopic. Klinghart talks about the microscopic ones being the most detrimental and some visible worms like roundworms, tapeworms, rope worms, And getting these out of the body is like essential to have a clear frequency, to have a clear mind, to connect to to God, to divine, to do energy work efficiently. We we have to get rid of these critters that are sucking the life force out of us. And, you know, they're found everywhere. They're found on fruit. They're found in the soil. They're found on doorknobs, on toilet seats. They're Eggs, eggs of these wor- uh, worms and parasites are found everywhere because, well, really we've kind of moved into like a worldwide parasitic condition. Like we're all fermenting right now instead of thriving. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Your, it sounds extreme, is, but like oh, your I really believe it. Parasite poop. Yeah. yeah, like if you took a look at an average like severely overweight person uh walking down the street their belly you know being 12 inches past where it should be that belly like i could only imagine what's inside of that because i knew what was inside of me being 150 pounds and working out every day of my life and eating i mean eating not eating in third world countries and i had a belly filled with hundreds and hundreds of worms, right? Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine what's inside of a belly like that. Some people even say that the protrusion is so extreme because of parasites, because of worms and and other creatures in there. So I encourage everybody to, to at the very least go on like a 30 or 60 day oral parasite cleanse. There are many different ones out there and there's many different ways to do it. But one way that I've found to be the most effective um, is rectal suppositories, where you take those same herbs and you introduce it rectally. And that is when about 85 to 90% of my clients have seen visible worms, even the ones that start the coaching process. And they're like, there's no way I have worms detox, dude. There's no way. I'm like, okay, we'll see. We'll see. And there's no way I'm putting suppository. And there's no my, way I'm putting suppository. Up my and bum. <laughs> within three suppositories, three or four suppositories, they see that, that round worm that comes out. that looks like an earthworm. And then they're like, they're a believer, instantly a believer. Everything in their world just changes. Even though that round worm coming out didn't really change their health that much, right? Because one parasite coming out doesn't really dramatically change our health, but it changes their whole perspective on like what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. If everybody saw, if everyone did like 10 parasite suppositories and saw what came out of them, I think everyone would be a believer in detox. I did that. I followed your protocol. Like I bought the cocoa butter and like the Uh little bullet, you know, ice cube trays and bought like the bio pure 10 in one oil and uh, put that, put that in them and did the whole shebang. And it, it was, it was amazing. I mean, it's just, uh, 
And that was like my very first parasite cleanse that I did. Wow. And uh, following like what you do and you talk about mm. in your, your protocols. And it was fantastic. It was very stinky uh, because there's like, you know, garlic in, totally. in the oils, but garlic kills everything. I mean, it's just, it's amazing, but it's uh, really, really effective. Totally effective. Garlic is traumatizing for your partner or your spouse. So be, <laughs> be or cautious. You. Or, or you. you also. You, you'll get used to it yourself. It's the people around you. My who whole just house like, is like stinky. I, I remember going to hot yoga while doing a series of garlic suppositories <laughs> and I was almost asked to leave actually. That's how the woman had to have a talk with me and she was like, because I came in like three classes in a row smelling the same way and she had to have a talk with me and she was like, dude, like, what are you doing? You are reek when you sweat. <laughs> yeah, it gets detox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, talk to us about mucoid plaque. Uh, yeah. So what is that and how does it relate to detox? Yeah. You know, a lot of people say that it's a, it's a bogus thing and science says it's bogus. Colonoscopies say it's bogus. Uh, even one of my really dear friends, Spencer Feldman from Remedy Link, who's a genius, says it's bogus. And, it, and a lot of really intelligent people say it's bogus. But the thing that has convinced me beyond what any intelligent person around me says is that doing mucoid plaque cleanses has changed my life probably more than any other detox I've ever done, okay? Maybe in line with chelating mercury. I would say chelating mercury and mucoid plaque have both like moved the needle for me in massive, massive ways. And it, it's confusing to me how this plaque can come out without binders. You know, there's probably 10 different times that this plaque came out without any charcoal, without any clay, without any psyllium husk, and science debunks plaque as the clay and the psyllium husk combined together, and that's the substance that comes out. Furthermore, the smell of this substance is, I mean, garlic is like roses compared to the smell of, of this stuff, right? And the other piece of the puzzle that has convinced me is that I've taken clay and char um, clay and psyllium, which is a milky white gray substance when you put it into your body and the the stuff that has come out of me has been dark dark black right because some people say it's the charcoal that causes it to be black i've done it without charcoal i've done it with pectin with clay with psyllium husk and i'm sure as hell that when it's when it's in that jar it's not black right so it's it's all uh, a real big controversial subject. In my experience, it is very, very real. In Dr. Richard Anderson's experience, I've talked to him several times. It's beyond very, very real. He wrote a whole book and created a whole career out of it. So the ways that I've found to effectively clean and clear it are a lot of lemon juice, black radish, dill, and binders. Binders like clay, charcoal, pectin, chitosan, zeolites, mixing them all together with psyllium husk, creating a big shake out of it, and drinking that. It's like a vacuum that goes in and pulls that plaque out of the system. So I think everyone should embark on a mucoid plaque cleanse. I have a video on YouTube, which at one point was getting like 100,000 views a month, and then they like shut it down. They were like, Let's make sure we keep this quiet. <laughs> now it hardly gets any views. Well, what um, exactly is this plug? I mean, I'm assuming it's yeah. kind of part like lining of the intestines, part solidified fecal matter that's been maybe festering. It was so because sometimes yeah. people have like in their intestines like a little a little crevice where something gets stuck, or yeah. there's, it's like oily and gets can just get hardened over time. And because uh, people do, they have like intestines can get twisted or they maybe had a, a lifelong diet of really horrifying food and people have stuff going on in their intestines. And then there's also the biofilms that can harbor yeah. all that stuff. So I don't, I don't see how mucoid plaque isn't a thing. I mean, it just seems like on its face, very obvious that there's yeah. stuff going on in the lining of your intestines that needs to be cleared out. Totally. And remember, the body makes its own mucus when we eat crappy foods, right? So imagine day in and day out, three, four times a day, eating mucus-forming foods, the body producing mucus to protect itself, 
time in and time out, decade after decade after decade, imagine how that sewage system, that plumbing can't hang, you know? I, I cleaned my sink pipes in Portland. The, when I was onto mucoid plaque, I randomly uh, had to, my sink fell apart and I had to like clean the sink pipes uh, synchronistically. And I take the sink pipe out and there was a black film that basically the half of the pipe was, the, the diameter of the pipe was half of what it should be because of this black film that was simply coming from washing hands from, I mean, it was a bathroom sink. What are people doing in there? You know? washing their hands, washing their face, putting soaps, putting other substances down. And after three, four years, even less probably, that, that tube was one half of the diameter. Now, granted, our colon has peristalsis, which is an action that is supposed to release and remove substances. But to think that our peristalsis can catch up with what we're doing, the onslaught that we're putting uh, that, that is upon us right now, um, with our diet and with uh, the alcohol and drugs and pharmaceuticals. I mean, come on, there's no way our body was meant to handle that, that level, that burden, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I did a series of colon cleanses and this is kind of like my first foray into that after this is maybe in my early twenties, after I just spent pretty much my whole life eating fast food and just Coca-Cola and just totally disgusting. And, um, and then I, I did this a series of 10 colonics and did the uh, psyllium husk. I drank a huge glass of psyllium husk for a couple of days before each colonic. And everything that came out, it was black. It was this black, ropey stuff, <sighs> ropey looking stuff. It was almost like the lining of my intestines. It looked like the formation of the lining of my small intestine that had was coming out. It was really crazy. Everyone should just go based on how they feel. I'm sure you felt dramatically different after that. Whether yeah. mucoid plaque is real or not, or whatever science says, I don't really care. If you do the cleanse and you feel better, I'm happy. You're happy, right? So I, I encourage everyone to try it and see for themselves, know for themselves. And the reason I have to speak in this way is because there's so much out there that is like against mucoid plaque that just like all of these scientists are just like, it's impossible for it to be real. So the way I debunk all of the whole argument is like, okay, I don't care if it's real or not. It makes people feel better, right? Yeah. If it makes you feel better, go for it. But also, you know, we know when people have gut infections that these infections are living in the biofilms in the lining of the intestinal tract. And those have to be um, uncovered in some way. And you can do, you can probably very much will help by, doing psyllium or another type of fiber that's kind of slowing off that lining of the intestines can totally. definitely help. Or doing something like lauricetin, which is a coconut-based coconut product that can help to break up the biofilms. There's lots of different ways to attack this, but I think definitely you've mm. got to be doing you know, seasonal, regular colon cleansing to be healthy. Totally. And I do coffee enemas on a regular basis. I don't do the psyllium husk colon uh, cleansing or, you know, water colonics anymore, but I think it's something that definitely is really helpful for people. Totally. I do regular coffee enemas as well. It's been one of my go-tos for like five years. Yeah, I would die without coffee enemas. <laughs> Let's talk about the fact that a lot of people have stuff going on where they have anger, irritability, depression, all these things going on in their head. And let's talk about that in relation to detoxification. Yes. So I remember a few psychiatrists and people in my life when I was going through a lot of problems said, you know, all these problems are in your head. My sister would tell me, it's all in your head, Josh, snap out of it. And this is kind of the conventional way of dealing with people who don't conform to our box that we quite understand, right? And what I've learned, and I'm incredibly passionate about this, uh, especially in these past few months, is that everything kind of was in my head, okay? And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make a list of the important things for people to take care of from this point of my body up that I've addressed and continue to address that quite frankly could change every single person's life on the planet if they if they tackle these things so we'll start with tonsils all right in a week i'm going to germany to do my second uh, my third regenerative cryotherapy on my tonsils with dr dorhove 
who Dr. Klinghart recommends. And I had chronic tonsillitis because I had a, a brain full of mercury. And when mercury and other toxins leave the brain, they cause a lot of stress on the tonsils. So anyone who's dealt with chronic illness is probably dealing with a, a burden on their tonsils that's above average. And we have to make sure we take care of our tonsil health, right? This is one of the core pieces of the puzzle at, at Sophia Health Institute, uh, which I visited a couple months ago to, to do an interview with Klinghart. So getting the tonsils taken care of, if you can't go to Germany, which I understand, check out Sophia Flow. It's a cream that you put on your tonsils. You can check out uh, any lymphatic herbs in a cream that you can put on your tonsils, lymphatic massage, dry skin brushing, rebounding. Our mutual friend Spencer has a, a product, Limplex. So that's the tonsils, right? I'm going for my third and final treatment, which has really, really changed my life. My brain is able to detox so much more effectively now. I've been chelating recently and, and chelating that mercury from the brain. I can just tell it's way more fluid. Uh, coming out of my body. It's not getting stuck as much. And then we move up to the mouth, right? We have cavitations, which you're familiar with, those, those jawbone uh, necrotic tissue in the jawbone because we get our, our wisdom teeth removed in an ass backwards way in this, in this common culture. Long and short of, the, the, of wisdom teeth is like when they remove a tooth, they literally leave this pocket of of tissue that hasn't been cleaned properly. They leave the periodontal ligament there so the immune system can't even fight infections in that area. It's like a nowhere else in medicine do we leave something in the body to just rot, right? We always seal, we always clean. And that's not being done in, in modern dentistry. So Yeah, I did a whole podcast about cavitations with Dr. Panapore or Alareza Panapore, who's my personal dentist, and he trained with Dr. Klingart for 15 years. So if you guys want to dig into that whole podcast about that. Awesome. I got to check that out myself. And then we have uh, root canals, right? Everyone saw, every one of your people, I'm sure, saw a root cause documentary. If you haven't, go watch it. And you have root canals, right? Cavitations. And then there's mercury fillings, a whole other, in, in a league of their own. That's what almost ended my life, right? Mercury fillings were largely responsible for my insanity, right? And then we have uh, jaw, okay? Jaw misalignments, which I always, I couldn't believe that it was a real thing. There's a TED talk that I would love to, for you to put, if you could put a link in your, in your uh, info description, I would love to show people this TED talk about a man who had a car accident. His life was just devastated after this car accident. He healed by healing his jaw and his bite. Because when our jaw is off, even a micro, micro millimeter, it flares the whole immune system and nervous system because it's connecting to our cranial nerves uh, and the, our upper cervical, and it basically puts the body in fight or flight. So one thing I'm doing now, which Dave Asprey has done for six years, is I've, I've, I'm working with Dr. Jennings, and he gives you this specific mouth guard that... Um, it prevents your jaw, and it makes me talk funny, so I'll take it off in yeah. a second. But it prevents your jaw from biting down in this habitual way that we ha have done for many, many, many years. Yeah. And you can actually eat with these, and you sleep with these, and it puts your jaw the way that nature wanted our jaw to be, more forward. And it forces your jaw to open on a, on a pivot point that doesn't move. Right now, the pivot point is a, has the ability to move forward and backwards, and these night guards prevent that from happening. Uh, it's a year process with this thing, uh, multiple year process. So um, it's it's a big commitment for me. But as like you you talked to me before we we started uh, chatting, that you know you were having some jaw uh, some clenching issues myself as well from the stress of life, and I've been grinding my teeth for fifteen years. Yeah. So for me, uh, it's really, really important to get this taken care of. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I had that same issue as well. I went to the dentist and I was having pain and jaw pain. And that was the first thing he did was like, you're going to continue to have this jaw pain. You're going to continue to have maybe issues sleeping or maybe like tension headaches and all this stuff. 
unless you do this night guard. And every dentist had told me I need a night guard, but they didn't tell me why. They didn't tell me I could crack a tooth. They didn't tell me that I could have, you know, prevent the lymph draining from my brain. They didn't tell me that you have this, hor most of the, your hormone receptors are in this gland right at your jaw. And when my dentist released my jaw, this, the first day I was like, crying and really emotional because I had these hormone receptors that were activated. And so it was so important. So I'm glad you're bringing this up. Yeah. How did he release your jaw? Was it with a massage technique? I got the, the night guard. Yeah. So he did the, the, night, the night guard with me. He actually did a, an injection in my sternocleidomastoid, like this oh, tendon wow. right here. I didn't ask him what. I'm like, oh, is that Botox? <laughs> but he just gave me this little injection to to, re, to relax something. Got it. Um, did some muscle testing to make sure that the night guard was fitted correctly, and uh, and I just I feel so much better. I sleep better, and I just highly recommended to look into that. Yeah, super super important. And and this was the last thing I learned about after doing all of the other things. The final thing that I, that I wanted to hit on is uh, upper cervical. I had an atlas that was out of place my whole life and I didn't even know about it. The atlas is C1 and the axis is C2. And when these vertebrae are out of alignment, it puts a lot of pressure on the brainstem, one, C1 in particular. So I view the world now that I know what having an atlas in the right place is like and how much it affected me when it was out. I literally look at the world and I'm just like, everyone's walking around with misalignments in their spine. So anyone dealing with chronic illness, please go. This would be one of the first pieces of the puzzle because it's, it's pretty affordable. The other stuff we talked about, a lot of it's very expensive. Go to a Blair upper cervical chiropractor or a NUCA chiropractor, N-U-C-C-A, or anyone who specializes in C1 and C2 misalignments. Regular chiropractic does not teach how to put C1 or C2 back in place. Um, so you, you, you could ask your regular chiropractor about it and he may not even know about it and how effective and important it is. So my, my most effective plan of action in my book is Blair Upper Cervical. Uh, these guys are amazing. And I've gone to, and I've filmed a lot of videos with the man who teaches everyone in the country. His name is Dr. Forrest. Um, he's the one who I see. So I, I really hope that everyone can, can go do that if, you're, if you've been struggling and if you've been lost for many years, not able to find answers, get your upper cervical in alignment. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, very, very good advice. I've been going to a, a neurological chiropractor off and on uh, for years and it's just completely different. The techniques and how they adjust you and the assessment, just completely different than just a regular chiropractor. Totally different, yep. Yeah. Well, Josh, thanks so much for coming on the show and imparting your wisdom and giving us kind of another aspect, another kind of viewpoint of detox and how it can impact our lives and things to be paying attention to. It's not, it's not just this physical process where we're like, oh, we have metals. Let's go and take something and rip them out. There's a lot more to it than, than just that. So totally. thanks for coming on. Tell us where we can find you and learn what you do and work with you. Yeah. I have a website, thedetoxdudes.com. I do retreats uh, a couple times per year. And then uh, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I have a class, a master class that I sell. So all of those links will be in the info description, but my website is thedetoxdudes.com. My YouTube is The Detox Dudes, and I wanted to plug in my new YouTube channel, if you don't mind, Wendy. I have a new YouTube channel that's only spirituality. I'm not talking about any detox stuff. It's all esoteric spirituality, and, and I do some skits, and uh, you know, I'm kind of like crazy, and I do all kinds of crazy fun things, and my, letting my actor self come out. And that's Mason, your face. That's my last name and your face. Mason, like your face. Um, like so I'm that. having a lot of fun with that channel. And um, yeah, check me out. Subscribe to me. All right. Fantastic. Well, Josh, thanks for coming on. And everyone, thank you so much for listening to the Myers Detox podcast, where we discuss everything related to heavy metal and chemical detoxification, and today, the emotional and spiritual aspects. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please leave me a review on iTunes or go check out the video podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash Wendy Myers. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you guys next week. 
The Myers Detox Podcast is created and hosted by Wendy Myers. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Wendy Myers and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.